Marjorie Taylor Greene, she got over, she and her husband got $180,000 in business loans forgiven from the PPP program. She said it's completely unfair for us to forgive student loans for working and middle class Americans. Representative Vern Buchanan of Florida said our plan was reckless. Guess how much he got in that program forgiven? $2,300,000. This is not a joke. Can't make this stuff up. Republican governors wrote me, wrote, wrote me a letter saying this relief was only helps the elite few. You all know you're the elite few? <laughs> I knew you were really special, but know you're the elite few. I'm serious. Ted Cruz, the great senator from Texas, he said it's for slackers, quote, slackers who don't deserve relief. Who in the hell do they think they are? And that right there, my friends, is how it is done. We just watched President Joe Biden go on the offensive against Republicans who condemned them for their hypocrisy when it comes to student debt relief and also called out how idiotic it is to suggest that student loan forgiveness is elitist. I've talked about this on the program before. The White House has even shared this stat, but 87% of student debt relief recipients make less than $75,000 per year. So to pretend as if this is something that disproportionately benefits elites. It's demonstrably untrue. But the problem is that Republicans are very good at messaging. They all get on the same page. They all repeat the same talking points. And it sticks. They've monopolized discourse election after election in this country when this party should be politically irrelevant for how extreme they are. So what Biden is doing here is very important. And you saw the way that the crowd responded. They actually reacted well to Democrats going on the attack. It's time for Democrats to, to stop tucking their tail between their legs and start going after Republicans like this and naming names. The problem, I fear, is that it comes a little bit too late because the election is less than a month away. It's just weeks away now at this point, believe it or not. And Republicans have seen a lot of momentum. Now, why is that? There's a number of reasons, but I think it's because, once again, Republicans have been able to monopolize discourse. They're talking about the economy. They're talking about inflation. They're talking about things that affect Americans. And when they're able to set the narrative, it's because Democrats have not sufficiently put them on the defensive. So let me just remind you what happened over the summer. Republicans were forced to play defense over their extremism on Roe and how unpopular that opinion was with the United States. Now, on top of that, Democrats, I think, did better by forcing House Republicans at least to vote and prove how extreme they are when it comes to marriage equality, the right to contraception. And for the first time in a very long time, Republicans were having to play defense and prove to the American people that they're not extremists, which was difficult to do. And at that time, they were doing poorly in the polls. But time has passed, the anger has died down, and that's because Democrats have let the anger die down. Biden needs to make it even more clear than that. What's at stake here? If Republicans retake control of the House and the Senate, then you could lose student loan relief. You could see cuts to Social Security and Medicaid. That is what is at stake. And sure, is it fear-mongering as a means of galvanizing voters? Absolutely. But people should be afraid of what Republicans have to offer because this is an extremist party that poses a threat to democracy. So if fear isn't a motivator in this instance, then how could it ever be? Republicans are extreme, but yet they force everyone to vote out of fear because of the bullshit that they drudge up. Fake hysteria over what's going on in classrooms, fake hysteria over transgender people, and it's not okay. So Democrats have to instill fear in voters because this is a genuine time where fear is warranted. And if Republicans win, we can lose a lot. One of those things being student debt. NPR explains a federal appeals court has temporarily blocked President Biden's student loan forgiveness plan, halting any debt from being erased. But the administration is encouraging people to continue submitting their applications. The Friday evening ruling comes less than a week since the application portal went live. Already nearly 22 million people, more than half of qualifying borrowers, have signed up. The administration could have begun processing applications and changing loan balances beginning Sunday. But now they can't do that, and it's because the the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals has decided to temporarily block 
this program because Republican led states are arguing that the student servicing industry, they could be harmed by student debt relief. So let me remind you, Biden in that video talked about how Republican governors sent him a letter saying that student debt cancellation is elitist. But here they are. We have at least six states participating in a lawsuit so that way they can block student debt relief on behalf of student loan servicers. Those states include Arkansas, Missouri, Nebraska, Iowa, Kansas, and South Carolina. Now, we don't necessarily know whether or not Biden's program will be blocked entirely by the court. If it reaches the Supreme Court, I don't have high hopes that they will protect it. But Democrats have to make it very clear. If you want student debt relief to stick, you can't let Republicans win. Otherwise, if the court does block this, then how are we going to take legislative action if they control one chamber of Congress? It's already going to be difficult enough with Democrats in control, with obstructionists like Manchin and Cinema. But if they take control of one, one branch of, uh, of Congress and the courts block student debt relief, that's it. You lose it. So do you understand what's at stake here? And that's not all that's at stake in this election. Biden made it very clear that if Republicans win, well, they are broadcasting right now. And it's true that they want to cut Social Security and Medicare. Take a look at what he had to say. Republican leadership in Congress has made it clear they will crash the economy next year by threatening the full faith and credit of the United States for the first time in our history, putting the United States in default unless unless we yield to their demand to cut Social Security and Medicare. You heard that one, right? You all heard them say that. That's what they're saying. Let me be really clear. I will not yield. I will not cut Social Security. I will not cut Medicare, no matter how hard they work at it. Folks, we know what the Republican Congress will do if they regain power. They're telling us. They're being straight up about it. They're going to repeal lower prescription drug prices I just signed into law and raise drug prices. They're going to cut Social Security and Medicare. They'll pass massive tax cuts for the wealthy, make them permanent, but they're not now the individual tax cuts. They'll threaten the very foundations of the American economy if we don't meet their demands. Now, that is really, really important. The problem is that even though Biden has his bully pulpit and he's finally using it, we need all Democrats to do the same thing, to repeat what he's saying, because that right there is very important. Not just have a strategy of fear, because we should fear the, the Republican Party. Absolutely, we should. But also what you're going to do, what your program is going to be in the event you retain control and expand your lead in the House and the Senate. So the way that Republicans operate is you never just see one person saying something. You see them all in unison saying the same thing. They have their talking points rehearsed. They go on every single news program. They repeat it. They have propagandists and the media repeating it. And so it's really easy to see the way that they're able to easily monopolize discourse, right? But with Democrats, you see a point be made that's really fantastic, and then they move on. You see an attack. And then you don't see that very often. But with the way that Joe Biden and to his credit, Tim Ryan have been going on the offensive against Republicans, I think that this needs to be done everywhere. Democrats have got to get on the same page and they've got to all say the same things because that is something that could help them get Republicans on the defensive. Make them defend their remarks because understand Republicans, I think, have been clever at sidestepping the abortion issue because that's not a winning issue for them. And they, they've just focused on the economy. I mean, aside from transphobic attacks and issues with regard to CRT and whatnot in schools, they also have been talking about the economy. Now, they don't necessarily state what they want to do to fix the economy. They'll just say, hey. The economy is bad, and they're doing that strategically because that is a losing issue for Democrats because typically the economy is going to be uh, blamed on the president, regardless if the president has a lot of control over the economy or not. The president and the party in power always takes the blame. Republicans know this, and they're savvy enough to talk about the economy. But what Democrats have to do is put them on the defensive. Again, explain what are you going to do? I mean, they're admitting what they want to do. Ted Cruz on The View today talked about how uh, inflation is so bad and it's hurting people. When they asked him, well, what do you want to do? He quoted Milton Friedman and hinted at austerity, which would hurt Americans. So you can't just let them monopolize discords. And Democrats are finally, I think, starting to get it. But my fear is that it just comes a little bit too late. They need to have Republicans on the defensive.
Okay, so this is the takeaway from this video. What Biden is doing is good. I don't want to pour cold water on this strategy because I think it's effective, but we need all Democrats to get on board and we need all Democrats to repeat this message and go on Fox News and repeat this message. Go into right wing territory and repeat this message. Don't be afraid to talk to right wing voters and explain the way that Republicans are lying to you. Explain what's at stake if Republicans actually retake control of the House and the Senate. Medicare, Social Security, these are on the chopping block. Student debt relief, that's going to be... A question, will it stick? We don't know. So yes, it is a strategy of fear, but when Republicans have utilized fear as a motivator for voters, Democrats would be stupid to not understand that fear isn't just necessary, but it is warranted in this circumstance. Republicans are as extreme as they've been throughout my lifetime. So in the event they take control of at least one branch of Congress, imagine the damage that they could do, the distractions that they could put up to stop the government from fun functioning. In the Senate, if Republicans retake control of the Senate, they control the court appointments. In the House, they could create a bunch of dumbass impeachment inquiries into Biden that are completely frivolous, but nonetheless, they have the subpoena power if they take back the House. They need to lay it out for voters and make it clear that if Republicans win, all these issues that you're feeling right now, the pain of inflation, high gas prices, this isn't going to get better under Republicans. So they've got to make the case, put Republicans on defensive, and most importantly, not only defend and brag about what they've accomplished, but they have absolutely got to make it crystal clear that they're going to deliver for voters. And then more importantly, they have to actually deliver. They've done some things that are absolutely good. But they've got to go further than that, okay? Because the reason why Republicans are so compelling to voters in the first place is because people are actually hurting right now. And when you are desperate, when your material well-being has been in jeopardy, taken away from you, when you have no wealth, well, you are more susceptible to radicalization. And if somebody comes along and tells you what's causing your pain, be it immigrants or trans people in schools, or just the Democrats' economic policies, they're more susceptible to believe you because at least it's an answer. It may be the wrong answer, but it's still an answer nonetheless. And so Democrats have got to make the case and do more of this. Put Republicans on defense. There's no reason why they should not be on defense 100% of the time because this party is extreme. They are trash and they are an actual threat to American democracy. So everyone should be voting against this disgusting party and, Repub and Democrats have got to make this clear. So we're starting to see them shift strategies. It may come a little bit too late, but still, this is what they should have been doing for years. And I hope that it pays off. But unfortunately, I feel like it just may be too late. But either way... This is what they have to do. More of what Biden just did. You know. You 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 know. You know the you know the thing. thing. You're getting nervous, man. man.